Hello everyone, so today we'll be talking about NICE guidelines for urinary tract infections in children. So under the overview for urinary tract infections, you have two categories, that's under 16s and over 16s. But today we'll be talking about under 16s because we're talking about UTI in children. So what does NICE recommend for the assessment of UTI? So when do you suspect UTI and when do you test for the urine sample, when do you test uh, urine dipstick? So obviously when they have signs and symptoms suggestive of UTI, then you're going to test their urine. Other cases where you might want to test their urine more urgently, which is within 24 hours, is if they have a fever of 38 degrees Celsius or higher. This might point towards an upper UTI or also known as a pyelonephritis. Um, or if this child presents with fever and you already identified as there's another source of infection such as maybe their pharynx uh, appears red and then you you concluded that this um, this fever the source of infection is uh, pharyngitis so you treat for pharyngitis and you wouldn't test their urine however if they don't respond to this treatment for pharyngitis then you must suspect or maybe it's not just purely pharyngitis, they might have UTI at the same time. So you're going to test their urine within 24 hours. So if they remain unwell, despite their treatment for pharyngitis or other side of infection like orthopathies, media or whatever, then you're going to test their urine. And um, talking about the signs and symptoms suggestive of UTI, right? Um, in children, it's not as simple as in adults because um, in young infants, uh, less than three months, they will present with very non-specific symptoms and also uh, because they cannot talk and they cannot tell you when they have pain during urination, etc. So if they are younger than three months, they pre present with these very non-specific symptoms, fever, vomiting, lethargy, irritability, poor feeding, uh, failure to thrive. However, if they are older, they can present like adults. So if they already have urinary control, either them or their parents can tell you that, oh, they are going to the toilet more frequently or they have pain during urination or they can tell you, oh, they can localize where's the abdominal pain and they can tell you if they have loin tenderness, etc. Right. Now, what does NICE say about the urine collection and pres preservation of the urine? So how do you collect the urine? So the recommended method, first line, is clean catch, which is where you clean the perineum of the child and then you try and catch. You ask them to pee into a container and you catch the urine with the container. Um, if this is not possible, then you try another non-invasive method, uh, such as a urine collection pad or an adhesive plastic on a per perineum to collect the urine. If this is not possible, then only you will think of invasive methods, such as inserting a catheter to obtain a urine sample or a suprapubic aspiration. A suprapubic aspiration is where you insert a needle above the pubis symphysis to um, try and extract some urine from the bladder and before you do a suprapubic aspiration you will want to do an ultrasound to see if there is presence of urine in the bladder and how do you preserve the urine if you want to culture the urine that you have collected right I did, you will need to culture it within four hours of collecting the urine however if this is not possible you need to preserve it in one way or another one way is to put it in a fridge and another way is to use boric acid and if you use boric acid you need to uh, check the manufacturer's instruction for this boric acid and use the correct concentration of boric acid because if you put too much boric acid then you might kill the bacteria in the urine and you'll cause a false positive false negative um, uh, urine culture Right, so what does NICE say about urine testing? Um, in this case, we are looking at uh, your urine dipstick results and then when you want to send for microscopy and culture. So if less than three months, you're going to send straight for urgent microscopy and culture and you're going to uh, refer to pediatric specialists at the same time. If three months to three years, um, if um, both are negative, then you wouldn't do a urine microscopy. Um, so if, if three months to three years, you do a urine dipstick, and in the urine dipstick, you will typically be looking for two things, either the leukocyte esterase or nitrites. Leukocyte esterase is a enzyme produced by your leukocyte, which is also your, known as your white blood cells. Um, and whereas nitrites is something, uh, the, it's a product, 
as a result of conversion of nitrates that is in your urine. And what causes this conversion into nitrites is certain bacteria such as E. coli. So if leukocyesterase and nitrites are both negative, so um, this uh, indicates that probably this is not a uh, UTI. So do not send urine for micro microscopy and culture if both are negative. Um, unless there is another indication. And one of these indications is that uh, maybe the child presents very clinically like UTI, but they don't correlate with the dipstick. So dipstick says uh, both negative means this is not UTI. But clinically you say, oh, this, has, this, this kid has foul smelling urine, uh, it's presenting with uh, dysuria, then um, you say, oh, I trust my clinical judgment. I'm going to send for microscopy and culture anyway. Um, or if um, if you do the dipstick, and then if either one of leukocyte esterase, uh, either leukocyte esterase positive or nitrites positive or both positive, then you're gonna uh, start antibiotics and send for urine uh, culture. If it's more than three years, we'll look at the next page. If it's more than three years, um, if both leukocyte esterase and nitrites are positive, then you're gonna start antibiotics and you're gonna uh, send for microscopy and culture. If only nitrite is positive and leukoesterase, leukocyte esterase is negative, then you still suspect it's a UTI and you're gonna send for culture and you're gonna start antibiotics. However, if only leukocyte esterase is positive while nitrite is negative, then um, you depend on your clinical judgment. So you still send for microscopy and culture However, um, you do not start antibiotics unless um, there is good clinical evidence of UTI. For example, there is obvious urinary symptoms. And then if both are negative, then you would not send for microscopy and culture. And you would not start them on antibiotics and you could investigate for other causes of infection other than UTI. So what does NICE say about the interpretation of urine microscopy? So you look at the urine under the microscope, you're looking for two things. You're looking for white blood cells. Actually, you're looking for more than two things. But um, how to interpret for UTI is you're looking for white blood cells and you're looking for bacteria. So if white blood cells present, then you call it pyuria positive. If it's bacteria is present, then you call it bacteria positive. So um, when looking at the urine using a microscope, bacteria is more powerful than pyuria for indication of UTI. So if bacteria is positive, um, either whether pyuria is positive or negative, you're going to regard them as having UTI. However, if um, bacteria, bacteria, is bacteria is negative and pyuria is positive, then um, you should only start antibiotics if they are clinically um, showing that they have UTI. And whereas if both are negative, then um, you will regard them as not having UTI. That's how you interpret the microscopy. So what does NICE say about indications for urine culture? So when do you do the urine culture? So we mentioned before this that you, if urine dipstick and both leukocyte esterase are negative and um, nitrites negative, then you wouldn't do a urine culture unless there are indications. So these are the indications. So if infant less than three months, uh, you're going to straight away send for uh, culture. Um, intermediate to high risk of ser serious illness, you will do a culture. Um, suspected upper UTI, uh, as I mentioned before, fever more than 38 degrees Celsius. Uh, then you would suspect. Uh, then you would send for culture. Um, so either leukocyte esterase or nitrite positive. Then you would send for culture. Recurrent UTI you would send for culture. Um, children with infection that does not respond to treatment within twenty four to forty eight hours you would send for culture. Uh, when clinical symptoms and dipstick tests do not correlate. So clinical symptoms say this is UTI. Dipsticks says or oh, leukocyte and nitrite both negative. Then, uh, but then you're gonna trust your clinical instincts, and you still send for culture. So, what are the risk factors 
of UTI according to NICE. So these are various factors. I don't think I'm going to go through them very detailed. So either you have problem with your urine flow, uh, so urination, any changes in urination, so pro-urine flow or uh, you have dysfunctional voiding or you have uh, change in bowel habits, so you have constipation or you have poor growth, high blood pressure might uh, indicate a renal problem and then either family history of uh, vesicoureteric reflux disease or renal disease or antenatally you've scanned and you saw there's something wrong with the kidneys or um, they have uh, recurrent fever of uncertain origin or you have a uh, history of previous UTI or there's a mass in the abdomen which might be an enlarged bladder or fecal mass or whatever other mass or you look at the spine you see evidence of uh, spinal lesion like spin spina bifida for example this is, uh, these are risk factors for UTI and you're going to document them in your notes so what does NICE say about how to differentiate between lower and upper UTI? So there are clinical methods and laboratory methods and imaging methods. So clinically, um, if the fever is more than 38 degrees Celsius, you would suspect upper UTI. Or um, if the fever is less than 38 degrees Celsius, but they have loin pain or loin tenderness plus bacteria in the urine, then you will suspect um, upper UTI. Um, laboratory tests, you're going to see the CRP. If the CRP is high, it will point you more towards upper UTI, but it's not recommended that you use CRP alone to differentiate between lower and upper UTI. Then you have imaging tests. Um, imaging is not uh, routinely used to differentiate between upper and lower UTI. However, in rare instances where you really want to rule out upper UTI, um, then uh, power Doppler ultrasound is the investigation of choice or you can do a DMSA scintigraphy scan. What is the, uh, what is the antibiotic treatment for lower UTI recommended by NICE? So uh, I only remember the first line. So uh, for lower UTI, you're going to do use trimetoprine or nitrofurantoin and these are used for three days. And the doses, you, it's not good to memorize doses for pediatrics. It's always um, better to uh, refer to the BNFC for the doses because it depends on their age, depends on their weight as well. So trimetoprine, nitrofurantoin, either trimetoprine or nitrofurantoin for three days. But if you want to do use nitrofurantoin, you must make sure that EGFR is more than 45. Right. How about for upper UTI, what antibiotics do you use? for acute pyelonephritis or upper UTI. So in this case, um, it depends whether they can take orally or not. If they can can take orally, and, and all of them are, um, you remember, just remember the, the these are cephalosporins. So if they can take orally, you're going to use the oral cephalosporin, the first generation cephalosporin, which is cephalexin. And you're going to use this for 7 to 10 days. If, however, they are vomiting and they are very unwell, and this is when you want to use IV antibiotics, um, the cephalosporins that I remember are the second generation cephalosporin, which is cefuroxin, and ceftriaxone, which is the third generation uh, cephalosporin. Yeah. And what does NICE say about antibiotics prescribing in recurrent UTI? And what does NICE um mean by recurrent UTIs, either you have two upper UTIs or three lower UTIs or one upper and one lower UTI. This is when you say it's recurrent. So there's a, uh, there's a graphic uh, summary about what you do for recurrent UTI. First, if they have recurrent UTI, they're under 16, then you're going to first, uh, you're going to refer to specialists and you are going to first uh, try and advise them for behavioral and personal hygiene measures. So these include um, drinking more water, avoiding more often, don't hold in your urine. Um, and also about hygiene is mostly in females, don't wipe from the back to front after you defecate. So if this don't help, if no improvement or no identifiable trigger, then you're gonna try daily antibiotic prophylaxis. However, um, this is, uh, subject you need to go you need to get a specialist review first before giving a daily antibiotics prophylaxis for recurrent UTIs 
So the daily antibiotics that you will be using for recurrent UTI is either trimetoprim or nitroferantoin if EGFR is more than 45. And this is only with specialist advice. And I think that's all I have for you. Hope it helps with your revision. Thank you for watching.